Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. Hope it's been a great day. Let's take a look here at XRP, see what's going on. Um, it's, uh, it's actually doing quite well, in case you probably didn't already know. Um, but this is a zoom into where we looked at last, where the price action came back down to bounce off its support range between 130 and roughly 138. So glad that worked out well, while as it wasn't expecting the all time, or basically, sorry, the local high here at 163 to get broken so quickly. This is a fantastic start to the week. So congrats everybody. Um, uh, to those who are in a long position with this trade, uh, XRP has been one of our stronger uh, day trading signals here. If we take a look, we can see AVAX, Bitcoin, um, see your poll. There was an ICP stop loss there, but there we go. Cardano, BNB, XRP, there we go. Two 20% short or long trades there, uh, along with uh, a few others as well. So again, awesome stuff. Congrats on that. Also, congrats to our swing traders too. We got an 84% HBAR long, as well as a, what was it, Tau, 71%. All targets achieved there. Uh, again, my swing trades generally take about a one day to seven days to come to fruition. While they're not 100%, they're doing pretty well right now. I think I hit 75% accuracy last month with somewhere in the range of like 800% return. So it was a good month for us. Either way, look at it here. Bitcoin's on the pullback. What's XRP going to do? That's the question I'm getting a lot right now. Let's take a quick look at the back and liquidation levels and kind of see what that tells us here first. Because when we look at liquidation, folks, we want to recognize there's some important factors in play. And uh, it's, it's really... It's a good thing to kind of get perspective on what might happen next, right? So we'll take a look at the last seven days and also, you know what, we're probably going to look at the last 12 hours too because I think it's important to look at the uh, the smaller time frames to recognize kind of what that looks like. So let's quickly peek at that and kind of go from there. So we can see here with liquidation, there is a total a good chunk of change at about 260 to 250, okay? So the price does pull back. We got a lot of high leverage longs at 255 to 250. You can kind of see those little concentrations here, those little red bars. Those are heavy areas of, of long liquidation. Uh, as far as shorts concerned, 290 to 295 are the two other areas there as well. So again, not the greatest data because it's kind of sparse and spread out. It's a little easier to see on other charts, but that's just general consensus there. I'm curious about the liquidation long delta. That's probably pretty high is my guess, but let's see how high this is. Because when we look at liquidation long delta, we're, we're wanting to find out if there's an imbalance, okay? Because up until this most recent pump here at about, just say $2, ever since we've passed $2, there's been a tremendous amount of people taking longs which is natural, it's very much expected. But when this number stays too high for too long, it can become a problem and the, like, the likelihood of the price pulling back is pretty pretty great. Right now, it's still premature, still early. We got a lot of, while they're late longs, there's still, um, this, this imbalance hasn't been happening for too long. It's only like 24 hours in. So I'm not super concerned with that. That's not a big deal. Same thing here as well. We got our point of control, open interest, 340. Is that heavy concentration? So most people are heavy at 340 or 320. Oh, correction, I'm sorry, <laughs> wrong chart. That's my SUI chart. Apologize, let's go ahead and pull this guy up here. Because um, this is the last seven day look back for open interest, okay? So taking a look here, let's zoom in a little bit more so we can kind of see that. And the easy way to understand it here is that there's heavy concentrations at 270 and 255. Okay, so two round numbers, easy to remember, 270, 255. 270 is essentially that resistance range for us, at least potentially, right? And then of course 255, that's this guy here. It's harder to see when we're zoomed out like this, but that's the general consensus. All right. So future reference, I'm going to post a playout chart on our Twitter, Telegram, or Discord. I will clean up the charts. You don't need to worry about all these crazy FIB levels here. Uh, I'll make sure to rectify that here soon. But when we have these kind of pushes like this, the best thing to understand is the macro and looking at previous highs and or, and or lows. In other words, where the price action stops. So if we kind of look here, we can see there's a pretty solid area of support, uh, potential support if the price pulls back to that 160 mark, okay? Now again, previous weekly or monthly candlestick closures are very important to look at because it shows us that previously, back in May of 21, I know it's a long time ago, that area of resistance held strong. So 160 was essentially that resistance range. At least the monthly couldn't close there. Uh, we would probably say the same thing here. If the price comes back down there, that's likely going to be the new low. Okay, I'm not proposing we're going to see that kind of price action, but that would be a decent pivot point based on previous closures. Okay, It's generally what we like to look for. All the moving averages, everything else is going to be super bullish. There's really no reason to look at the, the rest of the indicators. Same thing goes here for the weekly too. As long as we stay above 70 in the RSI, we have no reason to consider selling. So at the end of this video, you should you should be empowered to know that 
you're probably likely to keep your position open based on the overall sentiment here. There's no reason to short into this, um, both from macro and a smaller time frame perspectives. Just know that there is a significant fair value gap. Last week, we had a significant gap from 163 to, 1 to 222, and these fair value gaps are commonly filled. So the price does retrace, it would make sense for it to inevitably hit 165 and launch, all right? I'm not proposing you short to that level. I'm just saying that would be a good consideration for a long if we get there, okay? So fair value gaps are commonly filled. While it's not a guarantee, it's certainly a higher probability. Here's another one too. Smaller fair value gaps get filled quicker, obviously, because they're smaller. But we can see here, 197 to 225. So a lot of times you can draw out support levels at, that, at those ranges, and they kind of end up working as such once the price action recovers to bounce off that level. Again, fair value gaps, folks, this is just an area that the price action moved too quick. And the reason why it pulls back to that level is because market makers, the ones actually moving the price action, they're not people like you and I, by the way, they, they pull the price action to that level because there's so much meat left on the bone that that's where their average entry is. And a lot of times they'll pull back to claim or capture all that profit, okay? Now, if there's too many uh, whales, so to speak, or market makers, and some of them wanna remain bullish, that's a different story that may never happen, right? That does occur in a lot of cases. Okay, so daily time frame, every single moving average is perfect. Um, we're above all of them. We're above 70 in the RSI. There's zero reason to consider shorting. The four hour time frame, same exact scenario here. We're running concurrent with this ascending trend. And I know it looks like I'm just scribbling a bunch of lines on the chart here, folks, but these are gonna be re relevant in the relative near future. Okay, for right now, it's just kind of reinforcing the fact that you don't short into this coin, no matter how much it pulls back. Um, there's a likelihood we're gonna see a strong pivot at some of these key level supports, okay? And a lot of those are based on fair value gaps, but also previous candlestick closures. So we're kind of in uncharted territory right now. A lot of times you, you can you, you can use Fib extensions for this, but also you wanna recognize previous highs and lows too, uh, which I forgot to do here. In fact, let's go ahead and draw this out as well. This is important to, to put this here. The high, of course, the previous high, for monthly was like roughly 197, just like $2. That's an important level we wanna focus on. And what do you know, that's right there at the bottom of that fair value gap, okay? So that is an important level for us. And you can actually see here too, where the price action spent some time at its all time high and inevitably broke with an ascending type of trend here. That's basically a, a bullish type of pendant pattern. Uh, you could argue that that's uh, a few different patterns, but they're bullish nonetheless, okay? Hindsight's 2020, I'm just kind of showing you that that happened. Um, had you been able to since that, but again, that was 3 a.m. on a Saturday. I was sound asleep. I wouldn't have been able to catch that. Anyways, hourly time frame is going to reflect that we are super bullish and there's no reason to consider shorting this coin. So every single time frame is not exuding any sense of bearish divergence. Um, while it feels weird to take a long at this level, it's probably more likely to find success than you are to try to short at any given time. Again, I'll post a playout chart here soon, but from a smaller time frame perspective, local highs are at about 247. We could see a retest that 250 and a pivot off that level. Uh, or if we lose that level, previous monthly candlestick closure at about $2 is a round number and tertiary to that candlestick closure at 160. So these are, these are three just areas of concentration, 160, $2, and just say 250. Really easy round numbers to remember. Once again, I'll post our playout chart here shortly to reflect that, and I'll clean up the charts here soon, but those are the important levels to focus on. For right now, uh, the good takeaway here is that you do not short this coin. It's extremely risky. Shorting XRP doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, it's got too much backing. It's just not a, uh, a, a coin that you want to kind of trade against, okay? Does that mean you blindly take a long right now at 100X leverage? Definitely not, no. But a lower leverage trade, you know, maybe a key level support, such as this 250, 247 level, that seems more sensible to me. Either way, make sure you check out BigInx2, folks, just as parting words here, no KYC or VPN exchange. You, if you use my link to register at any given time, you'll get a $12,000 bonus depending on your deposit, okay? Pretty substantial deposit rewards regardless, but again, awesome exchange. I had a 60K prize pool last month spread amongst top 20 traders. That was really, really cool. Anyways, I appreciate your time. We'll look forward to seeing the next one. Have yourself a great rest day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.